Hi, my name is Tom Green. I'm also MU 1964 from the University of Georgia. In 1987, our brothers gave me the honor of being elected as the 113th commander of MU chapter. Today, I'm a husband, a father, and a writer. I also have a busy day job where I serve as an executive vice president for a company in Atlanta, Georgia. As you know, our 279 chapters across the U.S. boast some very notable alumni. Some of those names you might recognize as being famous, or maybe names you just know from being involved with your chapter in some fashion. There are so many men that give freely of their time in an effort to enhance the organization, an organization that's been loved by so many for such a long period of time. So I want to start by telling you the obvious. The alumni who volunteer their time for this organization are not any smarter than you are. We might be a little bit older, but in all likelihood, you are much smarter than we are. No, the primary difference between us is simply this. The primary difference is time. See, one of my favorite sayings is that life is shaped by the roads we've traveled. And not all those roads are paved, or straight for that matter. The men who volunteer their time to this organization simply have wisdom to share. Wisdom derived from a lifetime of experiences. Some good experiences and some not so good experiences. But as I like to say, sometimes the things that inspire us the most are not our favorite memories. Yet those memories bring us tremendous wisdom. It's part of what makes us uniquely human that desire to share wisdom with other people. A few weeks ago, I was cleaning out my attic and I came across this old note in my college files. I immediately recognized the handwriting as my own. It was a note that I'd written to myself back in 1987 when I was running for commander of Mu Chapter. The note simply read, what I want to accomplish as commander of Mu Chapter. There were four things. Number one, be a good leader. That seems simple enough. Number two, earn the respect of everyone in the chapter, even those people that didn't vote for me. And number three, this one seems simple, make as few mistakes as humanly possible. And number four, make sure you leave the chapter better off than the way in which you found it. For the most part, I think I succeeded in achieving those goals, but I honestly underestimated how hard it would be to reach the goals. And I can guarantee you, I made lots of mistakes. Some of them were bigger than others. But in hindsight, I think I forgot the most important goal of all. And that was to make sure and have fun and maintain my friendships along the way. Whether you're a freshman just making your way into the college world, or a senior about to go out into the working world, you're about to learn a very important lesson. It's a lesson I like to call the velocity of life. That is, from this point forward, your life is going to speed up exponentially. You will simply never have more time than you do right now. Time to study, time to chase romance and relationships, and time to go to parties and sporting events. But more importantly, you'll never have more time to invest in friendships than you do right now. See, as you grow older and you look back on this time, it's the friendships you establish that will serve you for a lifetime. I can guarantee you there is a dramatic return on the investment. At age 52 years old, I can tell you today my very best friends in life were those that I made in Athens, Georgia. But as you get busier, it's gonna be harder to make time for your friends. And I can tell you from experience, you can't make up for lost time with friendships. And as you get busier, you're going to try to find ways to make those friendships more efficient. You might text rather than call. You might choose to study or go to work instead of going out with your friends. Or you might choose to simply communicate through social media. 
Sure, social media is efficient. The problem is you simply can't nurture friendships over social media. Life is meant to be experienced out in the wild in full living color. In my experience, you simply can't do life with people digitally. I recently came across a survey by the American Sociological Review. I found the results astonishing. It seems that white heterosexual men have the fewest friends in America. The survey goes on. 22% of millennials report that they have no friends at all. 30% of millennials claim that they always or often feel lonely. I find these statistics to be heartbreaking, the kind of thing that literally takes your breath away. Now, you might not recognize the name Vivek Murthy. Dr. Murthy was the 19th Surgeon General of the United States under President Barack Obama. Dr. Murthy was the first politician in this country to openly talk about friendships and the value of spending time with friends. Now think about it. Of all the things this brilliant man could talk about, he didn't choose to talk about hypertension or obesity or diabetes or asthma or even smoking, the five big killers of men in the United States. No, he talked about friendships. In fact, when a reporter asked him what the biggest health risk to our country is, he simply answered, the biggest health risk is social isolation. See, there's a ballooning epidemic of loneliness in this country. You might not see it yet, but it's out there. And it's particularly surprising given evolution of great technology like Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat. Technology that was intended to make us feel more connected. But maybe this proves my point. We are simply busier and yet lonelier than all previous generations. And when the COVID stats are finally tallied, the statistics on loneliness and anxiety and depression will be simply overwhelming. Even today, the highest rate of suicide of any demographic is middle-aged men. Now you might think, so what? I'm not a middle-aged man. But I'll tell you who is a middle-aged man. Your father is a middle-aged man. And trust me when I tell you that you're going to be a middle-aged man faster than you can blink an eye. In fact, statistics show that men are really, really good at suicide. In fact, it might be one of the few things that we're better at doing than women. So get this, for every one female suicide, there are three and a half male suicides. So why should you care? Well, I think you should care for three reasons. First, these trends are not restricted to middle-aged men. In fact, your generation is the fastest growing cohort in the study. Second, someday you just might be the tip of the spear. You may hear that someone is struggling, or you may hear that someone has started to act in ways that concern other people. You simply cannot ignore these red flags. And third, as Ferris Bueller once said, life moves pretty darn fast. See, jobs come and go and careers change. Marriages sometimes fail and children can grow up and move away. And unfortunately, family members die. But one thing that remains true through all of this, through all of these life experiences, is friendships. And when I think about what has brought me the most happiness in my life, it really has come from deep and meaningful connections with other people. Because life is all about lasting and intentional relationships. It's about intertwining our lives in deep and meaningful ways, in good times and in not so good times. Like the friendships you're making right now. See, as men, we have a hard time being authentic. We have a hard time being honest. And we have a really hard time being open with our friends. We always want everyone to think we have it all together. Even when everything around us is completely falling apart. Brothers, it's simply in our DNA. 
But I want to tell you something, and if you only remember one thing from this talk, I hope you'll remember this. Showing emotion and sharing your innermost thoughts and feelings with close friends has nothing to do with making you look like less of a man. You're going to have times when you struggle. You're going to have times when you doubt what you're doing, particularly if you're in a leadership position. And you're going to have times where you feel like you are simply failing yourself and failing the people that are counting on you the most. It's simply okay to doubt yourself. And the most important thing you can do is to share those thoughts with a friend, to know when it's time to ask for help. So why am I telling you all this? Well, I'm telling you all this because the statistics don't lie. Trends don't magically reverse course and turn in the opposite direction. And I'm telling you this, gentlemen, because we've never needed fraternities more than we do right now. And we've never needed friendships more than we do right now. And we've never needed your leadership more than we do right now. See, I think our founders were brilliant men. And I think our founders knew that this day would come. I think they knew there'd be a time when men would be at risk. I think they knew there'd be a time when our leadership would be at risk. And I think they knew there'd be a time when our fraternity itself would be at risk. And I think it's what our founders were talking about when they wrote about the light of Sigma Nu. Because light is essential to see the obstacles that are in our path. And I think it's what Walter Sears was writing about when he wrote the preamble to the creed, which simply says, to believe in the life of love, to win in the fresh morning of our youth the loyal love of faithful friends, who will go with us unmoved into the darkening shadows of life's closing day. And so, to seek and to find, to have and to hold, the friendships that will abide. I want to thank you for tuning in and allowing me to have this virtual chat with you. I'd love to continue the conversation. One of the ways we can do that is for you to take out your phone right now and visit tomgreenwithane.com and sign up for my newsletter. And together, we can continue this important conversation. So gentlemen, may God bless you in the coming year. May he bless you with light and with love and with wisdom. But most of all, may he bless you with the friendships that abide. Thank you.